Okay, so check this out. I've got a couple of mini disc players here. One is my favorite, or what was a long time ago my favorite, the AM F70 from Iowa. Beautiful, luxury, high-end player with a backlit screen, backlit remote, backlit buttons, and amazing sound with a couple of huge provisos. Came out in 1998. I think this is the Jene of MD players. It's beautiful. It's got amazing functionality. Again, lit up buttons. I mean, you don't even get that in your MacBook anymore. Um, a jog dial, good battery life, solid construction, beautiful, beautiful champagne coloring. One of the best ever. The next one is a sharp, I think it's a last generation or close to last generation um, Alvi one bit player. This is not a recorder. The other one, of course, I should have mentioned is actually a recorder. So it's quite slim, um, good battery life can get good sound, has a pretty powerful headphone output, but it has a problem, and we'll get to that later. But first, what I want to show you between these two is a different sort of battery wells they use in order to supply the internal battery with a backup on the go. There's two different types of battery wells. One, you screw on just like you do like an SLR camera. You find the ports here, the battery ports, and then you find the screw and you just got a bit of a tremor going on. Not enough coffee, maybe. There it is. <laughs> All right. Then you just screw it on like this. A lot of Sony players had this. A lot of Sharps had this. Panasonic's had it. Very typical to have a battery well that screws on like this. You just pop the top and from then just put in a battery like this envelope here. It's very handy, secure, and while it makes the player larger, it doesn't really change the handling of the player. But then, Iowa, in their earlier players, or their middle, not their first generation player, first generation player had like a clip-on battery case, which is actually pretty cool. In their second and third generations, they did this. There's a tether, like a belly button going to its mum, <laughs> Or maybe this is the mum, it's got the battery, so it's supplying the power. And then it's got a very nice, very well machined battery case in here. Um, contacts are high quality, the springs are high quality, everything is well loaded and well organized, but it doesn't clip onto the player at all, so you have to just hold this around, like maybe put it in a pocket. And there's nowhere to properly extend this thing, so if you've got the extra power like you have with a, a lightning adapter or something for your phone now, well, you can't just extend it a meter long and then put one in your pocket and one in your other pocket and just kind of walk and then listen to music. No, you got to put both of these in your pocket because this is not long enough to go anywhere. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe it could go in a back pocket and the player could go in the front pocket. But anyway, it's, it's amazing. So, this bad boy is just a single unit because of this battery well. Really well organized, really well engineered, very simple. And I think most well-engineered things generally are simple. But this one, dear God. Okay, so, takes three batteries. Of course, this is an older player, so it needs more power. Put one in the middle there, and now the last one here. Pop the top, and then plug it in there. And voila, check those, check those lighted buttons. I hope you can see them there. Oh, it's freaking amazing. There's no disc currently. This is an awesome, awesome player. But yeah, so you have to carry this thing around like this if you run out of internal battery power. But the battery in this thing is almost impossible to replace and find. So you're going to have to use this. If you've got a hankering to own an Iowa AM F7, you've got to use this bad boy or somehow wrangle an adapted battery. Very strange, horrible design for this battery well. That's Thursday thing number one. The next one I want to discuss is the Sharp MD DR7, which was their first recorder to feature the one bit portable digital amp, as well as a four pole or TRRS adapted headphone jack. The problem with both of them, this one's powerful, but it's got a lot of hiss. I don't recommend it for modern earphones. The Sharp, good sound, very crisp, chunky sort of sound that you'll get from like really hyper digital sounding players. 
also powerful, but if you plug in a regular pair of TRS headphones into it, you are gonna get next to no stereo sound, which is a real bugger. And that is shared, that same problem is shared with this Sharp player here. It's also an Alvi 4 pole TRRS player. Bad design if you use regular earphones because, okay, if you're an audiophile anyway, think about it. You're not gonna use the included earbuds, which can be okay, and they were okay for both of these Sharps. But if you're an audiophile, you've got good earphones or headphones. Even back in the day, 2004, 2003, whenever it was that these came out, there were good Shures and Edemotics and other headphones already available on the market. For some reason, Sharp made it so that those players, if you plugged straight into this or into the remote, would not sound good because the, the fusing of the poles would happen when you pl plugged in a three pole. So you would essentially lose almost all your stereo, which again is on my article, so check it out. Today, I have an adapter, it's from Rode, it's called the SC4. It is a TRRS to TRS 3.5 adapter. I'm hoping that it will sort of remove the fusion from the four pole to the three pole and allow me to use nice regular headphones on this and get stereo sound. There was an adapter, of course, that came with these that was supposed to do that. However, if you get one of these used, most of those adapters were thrown away. And the reason is Sharp did such a poor job of marketing this player that no one knew what that adapter was even for. Well, it's necessary if you want to get good sound out of something like, of course, my always with me, always dirty Audio Technica CK10. Now, just for reference, I'm going to plug these bad boys into the Sharp directly and just kind of get an idea of how little stereo sound there is available. I'm gonna pull the battery out of this one first. Just charged it, so it should be 50% full. It's an old battery, so that's about as good as it gets. Um, battery is now in. Got a little chip on the back there. Not so happy about that. Anyway, I've got some Japanese music here. It's not mine, single collection. You'll see this on another video, wait. Single collection. You'll see this on another video. It's not my music. I got uh, like 70 mini discs from a local um, auction and uh, someone's got some pretty good stuff in. Music I've never heard. I'm not really into Japanese music, J-pop or whatever it's called. But uh, yeah, that one's got some good stuff. Anyway, we're gonna start with some Chicane. This is an album I called This Is Trance. It's just a, a regular mix that I made on iTunes. Then I burnt it onto a CDRW and then had that bad boy sent to what is it called? It's a Marantz CM6200, which then transfers all the CD text automatically straight to a mini disc. So awesome. Anyway, let's check this out. What sort of stereo information are we getting or are we not getting through these CK10s? I'm gonna plug this bad boy in. That's way too loud. Let's turn the volume. All right. By the way, this thing, the volume scale on the Sharp DR7 goes up to 30. So I'm not going to show it 30, but you just see it moving there. I've got it on, I think, volume 16 or 17. That's about what I feel comfortable with with these earphones. They're 55 ohms. They're pretty sensitive. They get loud through anything. They hiss as well. It's weird. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's just really duffy. All the stereo information that's supposed to be there is just like, it's almost like it's veiled. There's just nothing. <laughs> it's just like blob straight in front of me. No left or right. There's a, a slight variation, perhaps. A slight variation. You know, we're going to change a couple more songs here. Let's see. No, that one's it's too violent. Let's go to In My Memory. DJ, DJ Giesto. There is here on this song, it's supposed to be like in and out sort of chimes going left or right. Um, with this player, in fact, if you put one earphone in, you're not supposed to hear music really much. It's supposed to go ching, and then ching, and then ching, and then ching. So if you put one earphone in, all you hear is ching, ching. But because channels bleed so much through this without an adapter, <laughs> uh, you're getting all the music all the time. Anyway, I think that's about enough. Let's um, pause that. Let's open up the adapter and hope, let me get my knife again, knife with a grip here, hope that this thing does a trick. If it doesn't, I can use it for something else. I have some microphones that 
I improperly use for this channel that uh, might benefit from it. Anyway, let's pop it out. That's what she said. Jeez, that's cheap. It's just, it's a big box like this. And inside, it's just like that. That's, that's pretty poor. Uh, it's, it's from Rode. They're supposed to be Australian, you know. But uh, they didn't really care, obviously, here. Okay, but this is it. It's like a $14 adapter. I'm nervous. All right, plugged it in. This is what the Sharp DR7 looks like with the adapter attached to the CK10 cable. Here we go, intimacy. By the way, I was just noticing this cup here. I got it from my um, cousin, not cousin, my aunt over Christmas. It's plastic, you can refill it a million times. It's tough, I've been microwaving it. It says flourish on it, just notice that. I thinking, that cannot be designed by a bloke. That is a girl design, eh? Flourish. I don't even know what the word means. I mean, I do in my head, but when would I ever use flourish? Flourish. I expect to see it like a painting on the wall, like a huge painting of the flower and just out of the flower, under the flower maybe. Out of the flowers like that, there's aroma or something, maybe birds jumping out, maybe butterflies. And uh, it's behind a sofa. It's gotta be behind a sofa. It wouldn't be a regular photograph. It's gotta be like flourish. Or it could be, I suppose, in the corner. Like, you know, and it's got to just inspire. You see this and you just feel inspired. Flourish. Flourish. That's, that's really a girl thing. Whew. Oh, this is a real shame. Oh, wait. I didn't plug it in fully. Let's, re let's rewind this. Okay, it's my estimation that the, the stereo detail has dropped to zero. It sounds like the four, the, pl the, left, the left plus left minus and the right plus right minus, I think that's the order that it's in. It sounds like they've all been fused into the, t the two separate channels with the plus and minus and the separate or conjoined, whatever, whatever it is with the ground. I don't know balance. I'm not an engineer. Whatever happened, it sounds like it all went to mono. I'm guessing there's no stereo here at all, which is a real shame, because I was hoping. Yeah, it sounds completely mono. Which is like one step removed from how bad <laughs> the sound is through this. I mean, if you get 20 decibels of stereo, it's, it's totally non-optimal. But I think, from my own personal listening, that 60 decibels... To 70 is kind of maximum for what I like. Around 50, if you have uh, a pretty linear response in the stereo while it's under load, I find that you get just really great soundscapes. But if you have more than that, it becomes a little bit confusing. So, yeah, that's a shame. There's no, there's no stereo sound at all from this. Guaranteed. All right, now, one other adapter I kind of want to show, and uh, I, didn't bring, I didn't bring headphones for it. I've already tested it. Um, it's on the article that, of course, is linked to here. This bad boy here is a TRRS 3.5 to 2.5. So this will connect right into here. So you've got the four-pole connector here, or jack here, and you've got the four-pole plug. You put them together. And it's still four pole here, but it's 2.5, which means that you can plug in and the wiring is exactly the same. You can plug in any earphone that's wired for AK balanced players. So that's 2.5 Aston Kern, and they will work on this player. Now, of course, this player doesn't have the best output under load. Probably best to have some sort of dynamic driver rather than a balanced armature, because this thing doesn't hold signal very well when it's actually loaded by a pair of earphones. However, However, if you use this adapter and you go balanced with a real balanced earphone, you're actually going to get proper stereo sound. If you think that music is all about you, or it should be ready for you, it should be there at your fingertips, you hit buy and it's there. You should hit play and it's there. You should always have it at your fingertips, it should always be in your art, um, albums, it should just be there. Somewhere in the cloud or somewhere on your storage device. 
and it shouldn't be something you interact with, do you like it as much? Do you like it as much? It's a very honest question. Uh, and it's the main reason that I'm sticking with Minidisc and I've stuck with Minidisc and the main reason that even when I wasn't using Minidisc for the small interim between like 2006, actually for some years, 2000, 2010, and when I was really into the iPod, I tried to downsize my iPod as much as possible. In fact, I went with an iPod shuffle. I, I, my music, all my music for one day in iPod shuffle, bam. And then that's it. I would use that and I'd be like, that is my album for today. Just 512 megabytes and it's going to be Dr. Dre or it's going to be Snow. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Or it's going to be something like that. Well, check out, I mean, check out this guy. Look at this. He's, <laughs> he's carving up after he printed... He's carving up and now folding a mini disc jacket to put in a custom made mini disc folder case. I mean, that is dedication. Yeah, he's not a gearhead. He's not like, I've got to have the best earphones. I've got to have the best, the best player. I've got to make sure everything's like super high quality. No, I bet you anything, he's dedicated. He's making his own artwork. He's printing it out for the love of the music, for the love of the format. It, and you're connected to it. When you were titling stuff, you had to title, title, title. I didn't like that. It usually took five to 10 minutes for me to title a disc. And if you've got a hundred discs, you got a hundred albums to like juggle, that was a lot of work. But at the same time, you're going through each song, you're titling, as you're listening, you know the song title for every single song. You know, maybe composer, whatever else you put in, you know your music. And if you are cutting your own music jackets and installing them, origaming them into a custom-made case because you love your music, you're getting something way more out of it than you ever would from just scrolling. Oh, okay, I want to listen to uh, In My Memory by DJ Giesto. Okay, I'll go to number four. Number four is my favorite song. Oh, look at the album artwork. You know, I wish this thing had a better screen because, you know, this screen on this one, you can, like, turn it and then it doesn't have all the screen colors, like, wash out and all that. But, yeah, but... You know, this is it's so much better on my iPhone. Why am I spending so much money on like a DAP? Man, I wish, I wish it was better. And you get into this cycle, you've got to have a better screen, you've got to have a better output, you've got to have better everything. When in point of fact, the problem isn't the player, the problem is that you're so disconnected from your music because it's all just at the push of a button. Well, Minidisc brings it back. I don't put that much effort into my midis listening, and I wish I did, and I'm thinking of maybe doing it more. But dear God, some people do, and dear God, is it inspiring, and dear God, do they probably know and love their music more than I ever will, and definitely more than you who are listening to your flax and your title and stuff like that. All right, see you next week.